G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm going to show you what happens when you bury a fish head underneath a tomato plant. We'll find out if tomatoes grown on fish heads perform better than those without. Not only that, we'll also dig down and find out what happened to the fish head eight months after it was buried. Let's get into it. Remember my video I released earlier this year on what happens when you bury kitchen scraps in the garden? I'm standing on this very spot. And how in that video, like some eerie future prediction, I said how I wanted to try the fish head experiment. Here it is. I've known gardeners who swear by fish heads and fish bones in the vegetable garden. They reckon it's particularly good for tomato plants. They say if you bury a good sized fish head about a foot down and then start a tomato seedling on top, it'll grow the best ever tomatoes you could ever imagine. Perhaps one day I'll test the theory out to see if there's anything fishy about it. Nothing fishy about it. I guess it is a fishy experiment and this is how I set it up. I started at the end of April by saving two fish heads from our Good Friday Easter dinner. And then I selected a garden bed that was well rested with nothing growing in it for a good six months prior. The soil was in excellent condition and mulched with a thin layer of old corn stalks. Before burying the fish heads, I divided the area in half and separated each half by a wooden sleeper barrier to ensure no roots would wander from the no fish head tomatoes over to the fish head and inadvertently steal nutrients. I then buried two fish heads on the southern side of the barrier and transplanted four young Scorpio tomato plants that were surplus and growing in our tunnel trellis. Two plants were positioned on the northern side about a meter apart without any fish heads or fertilizer of any kind and the other two tomatoes were planted directly over the top of each fish head and again no extra nutrients were added. I deliberately didn't leave much of a gap between the base of the tomato plants and the fish heads because I wanted to ensure the roots would grow around and hopefully through the fish head using it as a slow release fertilizer throughout the life of the plant. To make sure no animal or dog got tempted to dig up the fish I zip tied a barrier around the base of the fish head tomato cages. Three weeks later and this is how the tomato plants were going. The one on the left is the fish head. The one on the right is just in straight soil, no fertilizer. One on the right's larger. One on the left is obviously smaller. But the one on the left is greener. One on the right is, is a lighter shade. It's more pale. It's quite similar to the one at the back as well. Where you've got the fish head. It's almost a similar size, but that one is actually slightly still bigger. That one's greener, that one's lighter. So I would say the fish heads are giving nutrients, but uh, for some reason they're not growing as fast, but they are growing nice and green. So uh, that's an interesting observation, isn't it? What I think happened was although the fish head tomatoes were getting more nutrients, hence the greener leaves, the decaying fish may have impeded root growth, and that's why the ones without the fish were growing bigger at that stage. Over the next several weeks, I managed all the tomato plants the same, giving them appropriate water and pruning to a few main leaders trained up the cage, leaving them to eventually branch out. At the end of June, about two months later, the no fish heads were still slightly outperforming the fish head in overall growth. We started picking our first fruit 61 days after planting, or nearly nine weeks. The plants without the fish head had the first ripe tomatoes, but the fish head plants weren't far behind. We were harvesting fruit from all plants, but it was noticeable that the fish head tomatoes were also producing more fruit. After the five to six month mark in October, there was a considerable difference beginning to show between the two plants. The ones with the fish head were still growing strong with much better fruit and foliage growth than the ones without the fish head which were pale, dying back, and had practically stopped producing new tomatoes. 
It wasn't long after that when the ones without the fish head completely died, leaving the fish head tomatoes to continue for another four weeks. Even at the seven month mark, November, when I did our final harvest, there was still some life left in these fish head tomatoes. I had left the last of the fruit on the plants to demonstrate the difference in fruit production, and that's why we had some wastage. And here we are, eight months on in December. Now before we dig down and find out what happened to those fish heads, let's go through my conclusion, if it isn't obvious. Which is, a tomato plant grown on top of a fish head does work. They grow stronger, longer, and are more productive. Having said that, this isn't Mythbusters, and I'm no scientist. And I know this is a very basic experiment, and the results are anecdotal. Hey, I'm just a backyard food gardener hack who's trying to have some fun. And for the last couple of decades, I've been doing these projects and experiments and observing them. That's how I find things out. Dig it? Let's dig it. All right, let's get rid of these frames first one at a time. Crikey. Ah! Right, that's one. Now I'll be digging with my hands for effect, but we'll see if it's hard going, I'll use my digger. Have we got anything? What? Oh, here we go. No smell. Look at all these little pieces. I put them to the side here. Absolutely shattered. All right, that's all that's left. Check it out. About the top of the head there, with the, I think that's probably where the eye is. Through there, or is there a bit of an eyeball in that? Uh, no, I don't think so. But that's it, of that whole fish head. Doesn't, doesn't smell at all, smells like dirt, um, but it's, that's all that's left. So that tomato plant and the microbes and worms and everything have completely, almost completely devoured it. That'll be dug back into the ground, but let's dig the other one up. Can we see anything? Here we are, here we are. I think it's moved. There we go. Similar thing, top of the skull, top of the head where the eyes are. And not much else. How cool. What a difference a fish head makes. Hey? Wow. So knowing these findings, would I continue to place a fish head underneath a tomato plant like in the future? Yeah, of course. I mean, if all the ducks lined up and if I had some spare fish heads at some time, I think it's a no-brainer. Well, there's no brain in this one. I that's a pretty bad joke. I think that that's, well, the plants probably ate it. I wonder if tomato plants can get some intelligence. Uh, that's, I don't think I'll ever be able to prove that experiment. But yes, of course I would, because I do believe it works. But what do you think? Would you? Let me know in the comments section below. Personally, I think this is a good method to dispose of fish waste in a way that also helps to grow more food. It saves on fertilizer, 
feeds the worms and microbes, thus improving the soil health and it's a win-win for everyone, except for the fish I suppose. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, fishy thumbs up, and share the video around because that helps my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. <laughs> now, I really enjoyed making this video and I'm rapt to see the results. That's gonna be very hard to completely break down, but you can see that it will I mean, I can just break it with my fingers. That'll eventually just turn to dust, but add really good calcium, especially for tomato plants. I mean, these bones are, are excellent for calcium, and calcium, as you know, helps tomato plants grow and keeps them strong and prevents diseases and a whole heap of things, even in the fruit. All right, cheers. Bye.